Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, as I said, my name is Dan Schmidt. I'm the Principal Project Officer of Community Engagement at Wellbeing SA, a new government department. And today we are going to speak a little bit about Wellbeing SA and also creating welcoming environments and enhancing our well-being when it comes to history festival events. Um, uh, as Karen said, I am a history festival event organiser myself in my um, spare time outside of my professional role. Um, and some of this may seem um, a little obvious uh, to some of you, but it's certainly information that it's, uh, if, you, if you have organised history festival events before, it may seem a little obvious, but it's certainly some stuff that I feel was really beneficial for me to learn because I've certainly held some events that have um, failed dismally, which we'll get into a bit later uh, in regards to um, uh, history, history festival events, uh, why that was so, and um, what can be done about it and what lessons I've learned. Uh, once again, um, I do, uh, along with uh, Karen and the His History Trust, I recognise the land that we broadcast from today is the traditional lands of the Kaurna people. Uh, but we also recognise that you may, may be on um, uh, other lands of traditional owners as well, and we respect their culture, heritage, and beliefs. Like I said, my name is Dan Schmidt. I'm from Wellbeing SA. Now, Wellbeing SA um, is a new government department, uh, new government agency that was uh, created earlier this year. Uh, based on a system that supports uh, inf improving physical, mental and social well-being for all South Australians. Um, it's a significant change from a system that has traditionally focused on people when they become unwell to a system that starts working with people before they come unwell. Because we all know it's, it's based on the, the simple concept that prevention is better than and be that physical health or, or um, uh, mental health, it, it rings quite true, which is why we provide a range of services, um, advice, information, uh, advocacy and events um, for all South Australians uh, in regards to their emotional and physical well-being as well. Basically, the overall goal is to maintain the well-being of those who are well and lead, you know, so everyone can lead happy and healthy lives. When we define well-being, um, because this is Mental Health Week, I just want to establish the difference between mental health and well-being. Uh, well-being is not just the absence of disease or illness. It's, it's, it's about all a, a whole range of factors in our life, a person's physical, mental and emotional health factors, whereas mental health is more of a state of well-being, uh, in which a person has the skills and resources to you know, bounce back when things go wrong, meet their needs and live in a way that strive towards their goals that they find meaningful. Um, which brings me to one of the main points I want to speak about today, which is social connection. Um, sorry, I've lost the chat box uh, somehow, but um, uh, if, if anyone's trying to, to chat to me, I'm terribly sorry, I can't see one moment. Uh, okay, I can see the Q&A box. Um, it's just a question about whether the... I've got the chat box, thank you so yeah. much. Oh, well, oh, well, this is great. People listening from, from all over, Victor Harbour, uh, Blackwood, uh, this is absolutely fantastic. So thank you for tuning in. And look, we are, although we are a part... Oh, someone in Barmer. I was down in uh, uh, Barmer not too long ago, um, up at Lake Bonnie with the kids. So wonderful place uh, in the world, and I can't wait to get back there. Um, but I want to talk a bit about social connection today. Um, social connection is really important to... Terribly sorry. Here we go. Social connection is extremely important. Um, it's really important for people to have close connections with others. Uh, research has shown that those who do have connections with others tend to live longer, cope better with health conditions and experience less depression. Um, it's what really helps us thrive as human beings, in addition to those you know, pesky little things like um, eating and, and uh, drinking and moving. Um, one factor that's extremely important when it comes to our mental health and well-being is having that social connection with others. But as time has gone on, it has um, appeared that people are less socially connected than ever before. Um, you may have heard of something that's being thrown around a little bit at the moment called the loneliness pandemic. Um, whereas where too many people and, and particularly older people are feeling extremely lonely, generally don't have a family nearby or, or close to them and are unable to have that social connection. 
Um, and why this generally can reduce with age is because people's health and ability to get around changes. Um, people's, you know, they're not going to work anymore, so they're not being connected with any uh, work colleagues. Then, because they're not working, they're not making any income. So there's less opportunities to go out and socialise with people. Also, more people are living alone these days, and uh, it can be harder to get around if you don't have a bit of an income, or if someone's lost their family or friends, which which does happen when you get older that connection to those people around you decreases as well. And it can be quite hard to make new friends or um, make new connections when you're someone who uh, perhaps um, doesn't have the means to do so. However, how this relates to the History Festival event, which is what we're here to speak about today, is you are all, as event organisers, fostering and driving that social connection, which is really important. Quite often we're holding um, uh, free or very low cost events at uh, places that are relatively easy to, to get to and providing an opportunity for people to bond around a common interest. Um, you're providing these opportunities for people to connect. Uh, you're connecting people with others, others are learning new skills and whether you know it or not, you're all essentially social scientists and you're, um, or, um, you're providing opportunities for, for people to enhance their own well-being and mental health. But it's also important to recognise that in stressful times, your own well-being may be impacted as well, which is what we'll speak about a bit later. And I know it can be particularly stressful um, organising any sort of major event, let alone a, a history festival event. So it's really important to take check of our own well-being as well as we organise these events, which we'll speak about in a moment. Now, I'm very sorry, I can't see the chat and do my slides at the same time for some reason, so um, I will, may have to save the chat to the end. So, let's talk about how we can enhance the wellbeing of our History Festival event. Uh, like I said, some of this may be quite obvious to some of you, some of you it may not be, but we should never kind of assume knowledge, uh, which is one of the points I really want to get across today, particularly when it comes to history. Um, I've been involved in um, uh, creating digital history for three or four years now. Um, and for some reason, uh, because of that, people think I actually know a lot about history when I actually know next to nothing about history. Um, so e even when I go to events, um, uh, people start telling me things that, um, you know, that, that they think is the assumed knowledge, um, which it probably is for a lot of people. But for, for a dullard like me, it actually isn't. So it, um, uh, it's really important to just never assume that everyone knows everything or knows what you do, because we only learn um, uh, by listening and sharing experiences. So enhancing the well-being of your history, uh, history festival event is ensuring that you make uh, connections meaningful. It's extremely important to provide a warm welcome, introduce yourself, um, in, ensure that um, uh, you know you consider you know whether can people can get to the event. Uh, your event has some sort of appeal, and also engaging with those in the event as much as possible. Uh, like today, we've got the the chat function going on, which I can't see, uh, but um, it's um, a great way to even though we're online and separated, we still have that social aspect where people can talk with each other, share where they're from, and learn a new thing altogether. Um, so even if your event is online or you are thinking of holding an online event, involving that social aspect is extremely important. Your event, you know, is really is in reducing social isolation through getting people, giving people an opportunity to get out and learn something new, uh, meet new people, and people of all ages and backgrounds as well. Um, from my experience in the History Festival and a lot of the events I've held and gone to, there actually is a wider range of people than I thought there would be when it comes to these events. Um, obviously, the event is extremely well promoted through um, the History Trust, uh, through the advertiser and online and a whole range of other means as well, um, which, which is great. And I think we're also quite fortuitous that we live in a state where you know, we are the festival state after all, where people are willing to get up and get out and experience something new when it comes to festivals. Um, so I think that's why we're starting to see, uh, particularly as time goes on, I've noticed even in the past few years, um, that we're seeing more uh, intergenerational approaches to these history festival events. And we'll speak about perhaps um, you know, options to make your event um, family friendly um, as well. Um, you know, particularly 
Um, I, I, I'm a parent. I, I have three three young children. Um, quite often, uh, you know, juggling around sport and, and dancing and sleepovers and birthday parties and social clubs and all of that kind of stuff. It can be quite hard for me to find some things to do with my children um, that is, uh, you know, accessible and interesting for us all. Uh, so if you are holding an event, um, consider making it family friendly. It's actually not that hard. Um, you know, you, you can cater, you know, to provide sort of little distractions or puzzles or toys or colouring in uh, in the corner for kids or involve, you know, young children in, in many ways or in um, uh, helping them touch feel and um, you know really explaining things in a simple way to children also um, if you're advertising an event you could you could even say you know um, there's, there's space for prams uh, families welcome that kind of thing as well because those intergenerational approaches and connections is what's really important to our social connectedness and our mental health and well-being um, as a society overall um, like I said oh, this was a slide I was Sorry. Yeah, advertise if you are welcoming families, um, provide pram access or um, activities that, that, are, that are suitable for kids, um, because we as parents truly do appreciate that kind of stuff. Um, and it really gives us an opportunity to get out, do something we enjoy and the kids enjoy at the same time. Uh, but it's also important, like I said, to look after your own well-being, because organising an event can be particularly challenging. Um, it's recognised it's okay to try and fail um, because that's how we do improve and learn. I've been trying and improving and also failing a lot for the last kind of three or four years in, in organising events and um, that's how I've learned from it. I, I certainly think if I, if I gave up after the, the first event I held, I, I wouldn't be as um, um, you know, thorough or as knowledgeable in enhancing the well-being and providing welcoming spaces and um, you know, putting on uh, events as I am today, um, which is a skill I really value and a skill that has had many you know, transferable qualities, um, not just in my um, uh, uh, you know, personal life, but in my professional life as well. I've actually learned a great deal and been able to draw on those skills from organizing History Festival events. Um, it's really important to watch and attend other similar events in the lead up to yours or think about events you've attended in the past and say, hmm, what, what did I like about that event? What, what did they do to make me feel welcome? Or, or what did they do to make me feel welcome? And how could I uh, improve on that or uh, replicate that or even connect with those people who are holding that event and ask them for some tips, tricks or, or hints in organising my event? Um, and it's okay to ask for help. Like people are here to help you. Um, the people at the History Trust have always been uh, fantastic um, to myself when it comes to organising events. And you'd be surprised at how willing other history festival event organisers are to help out each other as well. It's an absolutely fantastic community. And the only way we can grow that community is by, you know, really networking, connecting and supporting each other. Because really that's what makes it great. It's about, it's about providing that connection between events uh, to ensure that we're all doing the best that we can and we all have the, the best assistance we can. But what's one really important thing I want to talk about today is that this year has been certainly unlike any other. Um, I don't need to go into too much detail, but there's this, this COVID thing going around. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but um, it's, it's, it's done a whole bunch of mess when it comes to uh, events and whatnot and organising. Uh, we are quite lucky in South Australia, so it seems that we can, um, uh, you know, still gather in places, but, um, uh, uh, you know, COVID safe plans um, may be required for some larger events as well, which is um, all the information is available at sa.gov.au. But recognise this year has been difficult for all of us. Um, I don't think there's been anyone that hasn't been um, impacted uh, both mentally and physically um, or um, emotionally by what COVID has had. Um, and in addition to this, earlier in the year, which um, uh, almost seems forgotten about now for, for many other South Australians, is the devastating bushfires we had uh, on Kangaroo Island, in the Adelaide Hills and in Yorktown as well. So this year, people are a bit more on edge. People are a bit more um, quick to stress. Uh, and people have a what's called a window of tolerance, which may be a lot smaller than it usually is. So just recognise that not only in people who you may be providing an event for or a space for or providing connections for, but also in yourself 
as well. Um, recognizing that taking too much when your window of tolerance may be um, a bit, bit smaller than it used to be um, can actually be detrimental for your well-being. But a great way of increasing that window is asking others for help if you do need it. Um, and there are people here to support you through that. Um, look, there's a range of ways to promote um, steps to stay connected. And these are things like um, volunteering, taking a class, being active and, and things like that. Um, uh, and, and, and these are all part of a lot of history festival events uh, that are held. Um, but, a, but a good way to, um, but what ensures well-being and what ensures social connection, connectedness when it comes to history festival events is recognising that a welcoming environment is really key uh, when it comes to fostering those social connections around the event. Because um, if you're not providing a welcoming environment, people can be turned off by this, um, which in turn leads to uh, less connection at your event and then in turn leads to lower mental well-being uh, for those who are in attendance, uh, which could then, you know, then in turn, you know, uh, discouraging people from, from attending events um, in the future because, you know, they may think, oh, I, I attended that uh, one history festival event and, and no one said g'day to me. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, no one made me feel welcome. So it was rubbish because, you know, I'm going to assume they're all like that when, when in fact they're not. Uh, so in terms of creating welcoming environments, um, pick a really suitable venue with accessibility in mind. As there are many uh, history festival event attendees that are in the older demographic, uh, ensuring that um, uh, there's available seating, um, there's available uh, space, and I, I, I did know Karen is going, is, they are going to hold another session on accessibility, so I won't go too much into it, but letting people know uh, where the toilets are or if wheelchair access is available as well. Presenting the venue nicely is also a really good key. Um, no one, and, and this is always an if possible, um, if, if you are you know, holding an event uh, and it has to be in the library you work in or in the um, uh, local town hall, which hasn't been updated since the uh, 1910s, then there's not much you can do about that. But you can always spruce these little things up with uh, signage um, uh, and, and what's most importantly, just a, a warm and friendly smile. Um, if you are holding an event in person, ensuring compliance with COVID-19 restrictions for 2021, and those are changing all the time and seem to be uh, relaxing quite a bit at the moment. So um, keep up to date with that at sa.gov.au. Um, and if your event is online, like ours was, ours is currently, um, be, be sure to run a, run a test. We, we actually ran a test um, last week, uh, just, just a quick run through to ensure everything was working. But um, you know, you, you can run as many tests as you want, but on the day when you want to get the, the chat function up to see what everyone's saying, it's just not there. So prepare for things being able to go wrong as well. Um, also, um, attend other events and network to see how they are run. Um, like I mentioned previously, people are quite open to exploring and being able to provide support to others. Um, and also find your niche um, because people do bond over a common interest. Finding a niche is really important because when people are looking for a, for a welcoming event, um, it, it, it can be quite difficult. There are so many events in the, the history festival. Um, so it's important to make yours really stand out and letting people know that you're gonna make them feel welcome. Uh, letting people know in your advertisement that, um, that all ages and backgrounds are welcome. Um, or um, also just letting people know that how your event is different. Uh, for example, there, there may be a lot of car events, for example, car history events at the uh, history festival. Uh, so perhaps you may have a think and see, hmm, do I want to do just another car event or do I want to focus on a specific car or a specific make of car or a sp specific decade of car? And that will draw more people in from a uh, niche background because they'll have certainly more of a common interest in that area as well. Um, and there are stacks and stacks and heaps and a really, really good um, range of resources available at the uh, web link there, which I'm sure um, uh, Liz or Karen uh, can provide in the chat. Um, resources for organisers. Um, really great things. Everything from when it comes to marketing your event, setting up your event, preparing for your event. It's really great stuff. Um, so, like I said, I've been doing events for a little time now, um, and um, yeah, I, I have failed.
because I failed to prepare correctly when it came to some of my history events. Uh, so speaking of welcoming environments, this is uh, one of the first events I held um, in regards to history. You'll see there's about 30 seats there. Um, we filled about eight of those and three of those eight were people we found uh, sitting at the bar just beforehand. We didn't market the event well. Uh, we didn't provide a space that was really accessible. Um, if you look at the space between these chairs, there's, there's not much room. Um, it was a dank and dark environment. Um, and halfway out, a few people left because um, you know, we really didn't introduce ourselves or we didn't um, really know what we were doing. Uh, we were particularly nervous, but um, you know, that certainly shouldn't have stopped us from being able to, as event organizers, go up and welcome people and say, thanks for coming kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, from there, after our first event, we easily could have said, well, this is rubbish. That was a waste of time, a waste of money. No one came, a couple of people left. Um, uh, what's, what's the point of doing it again? But instead we thought, no, we, we kind of like doing this whole history bit. So let's, um, let's see what we can learn from that. And we learned that um, we like, okay, our, our audience may not be as big as we want it to be, but we have to promote ourselves better. Uh, we have to welcome people when we get there. And we have to let people know that they feel like they're part of a community when they're attending one of our events. So moving on to our next event, we provided, this is the next event we held. Uh, we held it in a smaller space, uh, much more intimate setting. Um, still not great in terms of accessibility, um, but a much better lighting. Um, we welcomed people from, from all, all backgrounds and ages. Uh, we um, uh, invited as many people as we could, which was great because, because the room was full and it was a much more welcoming and more friendly environment than it was in regards to that first event we held. You'll also notice that we're down, you know, on, on the ground, just chatting with everyone else, like we were chatting around a big communal lounge room, which is really the feeling we, we wanted to go for. Um, and that, that was a fantastic event, but there were still things we really wanted to learn from that. We said, okay, you know, our, our audience is growing a bit, so let's um, uh, look at things in terms of accessibility, um, in terms of decor and whatnot as well. So one of the next events we held, um, we, we got a bigger venue, we, we dressed it as nicely as we could. Uh, we provided a, a wide range of uh, seating, so there's, there's stools, there's benches, there's plenty of room in between for people to get around. Um, and it was a, a, a great event, um, you know, attended by over, you know, by many more people than we thought would actually attend. So it just goes to show that, you know, it, it's all right to fail. And that's how we learn from these things when we are organising events. Some other fantastic um, events and signage and welcoming environments that I've seen is just, just simple things like letting people know where the venue is. Um, really important and you think it's common sense, but you would actually be surprised. Um, and yes, I'm guilty of this myself, not putting signage up at one of our events. Uh, so there may have even been more people to attend um, that I didn't know about. Also providing a welcoming sign and someone at the front to you know, say g'day and also you know, talk about the, the History Festival. Um, what else have you seen? What else have you enjoyed? Um, uh, you know, let us know if there's anything you want to see from us or need from us. Letting people know where the toilets are, providing warm welcomes, um, acknowledging country, uh, really important as well. Um, and also recognizing the uh, correct country that you're on is extremely important, please. Um, I was at a um, Adelaide Fringe Festival event a few years ago uh, as an attendee. And um, obviously the, the crew was from um, uh, somewhere in New South Wales state and they provided a welcome at the start of end of the event which was great but they actually acknowledged the wrong country that they were on which I think is is far worse than, than probably not doing an acknowledgement at all uh, so it's, it's really important to um, uh, you know ensure that you are acknowledging the correct country that you are on uh, what I found is is really key um, in enhancing that social connection is encouraging participation where possible um, even today we're encouraging you to, to have a chat in the, in the chat box. Um, but, you know, allowing people some time to stick around afterwards, um, you know, uh, provide you with some feedback, um, have a chat um, uh, and, and really provide that bit of connection. Um, you know, ask people how they heard about you, really important, because that's where you can focus on how to continue to grow your event. 
Um, and also being aware that some people may, you know, being aware of people who do arrive on their own, um, you know, people who arrive on their own may not have uh, many social connections. Um, so being able to provide that social connection, a warm smile, a warm welcome, say, hey, I'm Dan, I'm one of the organizers today. If you need anything, let me know um, and stick around afterwards because, you know, I'd love to have a chat around how you thought it went or what you'd like to see done better next time. Um, and ask for help if needed, which we've kind of spoken about. Uh, as I said at the start, don't assume that people have the knowledge that you have around the event. Um, explain everything in as much detail as you can because um, assuming knowledge can certainly make people feel like an outsider. And I certainly now know that the History Festival is drawing a lot of um, uh, interstate and international tourists. Uh, so they may not know um, as much about South Australian history as, as we do. Once again, ensuring that clear signage um, and um, casual conversation afterwards can, can really foster that social connectedness and well-being. Um, also taking into account accessibility and inclusion, but I think that will be well, maybe not next session, but in another session that is going to be held in this webinar series. Overall, just remember no one wants to see you fail. And this is an ongoing learning process. We're here to help if you ask for, if, if you are looking to ask for it. But what's most really important, particularly when it comes to our own well-being as History Festival event organisers, network and cross-promote. Um, I've found this really invaluable when it came, comes to promoting um, the events that I do. And also cross collaboration, if possible. If um, uh, you get word that someone's doing quite a similar event to you on a similar topic, um, perhaps even ask if you want to pair up and do um, one really good event instead of um, uh, you know, two good events. Um, uh, you know, um, my team through the events I run, um, where, where current, we, we collaborate with um, local councils and libraries um, to explore the histories of those areas uh, where we can. And we find the support that we get from them um, and, and the promotion we can get through them is, is much more than we could do ourselves. So pair up, um, have fun, network, go out and fail and go out and learn. And, um, you know, because that's how we all improve and can make the event as a whole and us as a whole grow. Um, as it is Mental Health Week, and we are um, uh, particularly in, in a time where uh, a lot of us um, are struggling with um, uh, kind of emotional distress and um, uncertainty, um, I, I just wanted to speak about briefly helping others. And this could be if um, you recognise that someone um, attending your event is um, uh, not, not feeling the greatest or discloses to you they've been having a rough time or um, if you're partnering uh, with someone to organise an event and, and recognise that they're not doing so well. I just wanted to let everyone know that you really don't need to be an expert to help someone um, if they're struggling. Um, you can offer support just by letting them know that you care and you're there for them. Um, just ask them what's going on and try just listening to them without judgement. Um, and recognise that you don't have to actually fix anything for that person because sometimes all it takes is just a friendly year and, um, you know, someone to spend their time and say, hey, you know, I, I may not be able to help you, but if there's anything I can do, let me know. Um, and, and perhaps, you know, um, I may not be able to fix your problems, but I'm here to listen to you and I'm here to help you work through them um, because that's really, really important. I think a lot has been done in terms of mental health promotion in the past five or 10 years or so, um, but we're still seeing a lot of things saying, hey, if you, um, uh, you know, are feeling stressed, go see your doctor, um, which is completely fine, but quite often people don't wanna go see their doctor just when they're a bit mentally distressed. Um, people often, um, uh, you know, recover better through those social connectedness um, and also just relying on those around them. But, you know, if you are really worried about someone, obviously a, a medical professional is, is a, a way, way to go. But um, if we can just encourage people to open up to those around them and also, you know, equip people with you know, having those skills to just listen and sit and um, uh, empathise with people who come to them with issues, I think our society is going to be much better as a whole. There is a range of help available to people. Um, uh, openyourworld.sa.gov.au is a new initiative launched by Wellbeing SA. Um, you can read more about the work we do there. There's also the COVID-19 Mental Health Support Line uh, on 
632 uh, Lifeline 131114 and Beyond Blue. And also a great service there called the Lived Experience Telephone Support Service. Now, this isn't a 24 hour service. Um, this is um, run kind of, I think it's 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., but um, their hours are changing quite a bit as they, they start to grow, which, which is great. These are people who um, recognise that they have their own lived experience in terms of mental illness and chat to others just via a support line. And it is more of that lending an ear and listening and um, you know, providing a perspective of where they've come from and what they've also experienced. Because many of us, um, including myself, um, have experienced uh, mental illness, uh, mental distress, um, and mental health problems uh, throughout our lifetime. Um, so really connecting with others um, and letting them know that we're here for them. And we, we may not know exactly what's going on for them, but we, we, we will try to have an understanding um, is really important. And that's a local service. So that's a lived experience telephone support service. However, is, if it is an emergency, um, triple O or the mental health triage on 131465. Thank you so much. Um, I hope I've covered what you're after. Um, let me know in the chat if I haven't. I'm going to try and get the chat box up again now. Uh, those are my contact details. But um, thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, Dan. That's fantastic. Um, oh, did I, am I dropping out for a bit there? Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> We've had a few comments on the on Dan's sound, um, but uh, I could still hear him most of the time. So hopefully you can all you could all too, and we'll try and sort out the sound before our next session next week. For those of you who, who are coming to, along to that one, um, we did have one question that Liz has already answered in the Q and A box. Um, yes, we will make Dan's presentation available to everybody after. Um, today's session and it's also being recorded so if you want to share it with anybody else um, or watch it again you'll be able to do that so we'll share that around with everyone who's here. Um, so I have a question for uh, all of you so all of the attendees if you want to add to the chat box um, examples perhaps of what of times where you've um, felt really welcome at an event or alternatively, um, times where you have felt unwell kind of at an event. Um, so yes, feel free to add those into the chat box. If you have any tips for each other, that's always really helpful. Um, and Dan, um, I have a question for you. And if anybody else has a question, still time to um, add it to the Q&A box. Um, but, my question is, if you realise, um, say, halfway through your event that things perhaps aren't going well, maybe the crowd is not picking up what you're putting down, um, is there anything you can do to turn it around? Yeah, well, I think this is, this is an instance where, where, where crowd involvement can um, uh, certainly help. Um, you know, if, if someone is, is trying to flex their knowledge on you in regards of, you know, I, I think I know more, a bit more about this topic than you, um, say, oh, that's that's fantastic. Look, we'd, we'd love to hear from you um, at the end. Um, you know, let, kindly let us get through our presentation first and we'll have time for Q&A. Or if you're happy to provide any further input at the end, um, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, also recognising that, um, uh, you know, it, it's not going to work all the time and some people, and it may no be, be no entirely no fault of your own whatsoever. Some people may just genuinely have to leave because they've got something else on or having an emergency or they've attended something that they is really not what they thought they were attending. And that's no, no fault of your own. Um, so yeah, in, ensuring that, um, you know, but people are much, much less likely to, um, uh, you know, um, try and, I won't say sabotage, but interrupt your event. Um, you know, if you've pro provided them with that warm welcome and, um, you know, a quick introduction at the start as well. So uh, hopefully those are some tips, but recognize some people are just absolute numpties and it will happen. So um, just try and go with the flow where you can and it's all a learning experience. Yeah, that's a really good point. And it's so easy to take it personally <laughs> when people sort of hop yeah, out at halfway through, but it's not always because they're not enjoying it. Um, Anna has um, added to the chat that um, her organization co-hosted an online tour of the National Portrait Gallery that was super amazing and welcoming. Um, it was super interactive as well. 
And throughout the whole session, we were asked questions and the presenter built on the answers and it felt really inclusive. That's fantastic. That's yeah. Yeah, that whole involvement is, is really key. Mm. It's a good example of an, a digital event working well by the sounds of it. Um, another question for you, Dan. Yes. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we know quite a few people attend events alone. Um, and people enjoy attending events alone. Um, but what would you suggest? Do you have any um, additional tips for people to make them feel comfortable approaching the venue? Um, and how can you let people know that they, um, they're welcome and they'll feel comfortable when they come in? Yeah, um, good point. Some people do want to attend events alone because some people, you know, this may be the only opportunity they have a chance to get out of the house without the kids or, um, you know, without the, the husband or without the wife. And it's an opportunity for them just to take something in. Um, it's being up front and centre when you're welcoming people and saying, hey, my name's Dan. Well, don't say Dan, say your name. But um, say, hey, my name's Dan. I'm, you know, organising uh, this event. If you do want anything, let us know. If not, feel free to take a seat and um, yeah, we'll stick around afterwards if you, if you feel so as well. So there's really not too much more you can do than that. There are, I've been to some great events that certainly utilize technology um, when it comes to interactivity. I know there's some um, uh, phone apps you can get now where people can, um, if you're doing a presentation, people can text or, or um, uh, message with their phones to the presenter. Um, in, in, in a live environment. So perhaps that's another way for people who um, aren't comfortable approaching an, an event organiser or aren't as confident with that um, personal interaction. Um, but even things like um, feedback sheets at the end, or if you're, um, you know, being able to, you know, leave out some postcards at the end saying, hey, let us know what you felt anonymously, leave it on the postcard. Or if you have the contact details of um, event um, attendees, which many people do now through, um, Eventbrite or, or, or however people register, um, flicking out a, a, a post-event email saying, hey, thanks for attending the event. Um, uh, let us know what you thought or if you have any comments or stuff you'd like to see from us in the future. Yeah, great. And I've seen a few good, good examples of um, how people can participate without kind of being put on the spot. Um, so, I mean, the obvious one you see a lot in museums is uh, post-it notes so people can um, add their thoughts to an exhibition or yeah things like that or sharing with the person next to you rather than being um, told to share with the whole group so yeah if anybody has any other examples of things uh, interactive um, or participatory tips at events um, add them into the chat as well um, do you have any tips, Dan, for event organisers whose um, event includes some perhaps challenging or traumatic content? Sometimes history is not all fun nostalgia. Sometimes it goes into some um, difficult areas as well. So do you have any tips for event organisers um, keeping their audiences, um, you know, feeling okay in those sorts of situations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if your event deals with um, any sort of uh, trauma, distress, uh, violence, um, which unfortunately many events in history are focused around, um, it's really important to let people know that at the start of your event. Um, I held, held an event recently where we, we discussed the story of, of, a, of a horrific crime. Um, and this was to a room of um, uh, 50 or 60 people. And I say, look, the, the, there are circumstances in here. Um, some of the language used is, is is, is from news reports and it's from a different time, but we are historians and we are presenting this, this as information. Um, these do not reflect the views of us whatsoever, but this was what was printed at the time. Um, and also that um, if you feel uncomfortable at any time, please feel free to remove yourself. Um, what I did is I said, there's an instance where I'm going to talk about an, an event. I'm going to slightly raise my hand um, and that will, will signify that um, you know, for the next two minutes, I'll be talking uh, about an event that was focused around um, a hor horrific violent attack. Um, please feel free to remove yourselves and I, it will be no longer than two minutes and you won't miss much of the show. So uh, that, that's what I've done um, as well. Also, if you uh, provide, can provide that information in your um, marketing material, be that through the um, events guide or your events page uh, through the History Trust, also really important as well. Hmm. 
Thank you. Um, I know you've got into this a little bit already, but um, do you have any extra tips um, about encourage, for encouraging uh, social interaction at your events? Oh, um, activities are always really good. Um, uh, if you have um, um, an exhibition or something where people can um, just do something with their hands or, or work together to, to solve a mystery or a puzzle or get involved in that one-on-one -on -one aspect with each other, that's really important. Um, I think um, you actually sent me through some pictures, Karen, which I was going to use, but I, I didn't actually use them. And these are people you know, actually um, assisting with um, you know, holding things at the event, making things at the event, which, which is really important as well. Um, but aside from that, I'd love to hear in the chat um, if, if anyone has any tips around you know, um, how, how to better foster that social connection and inclusivity at events as well. Cup of tea and a scone goes a long way, I think. <laughs> or maybe some nibbles and drinks if it's after hours and you've got a liquor license. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, the window of tolerance concept you mentioned earlier? I'm interested in that. I hadn't heard about it before um, and how it might help event organisers understand people who are coming through their door. Yeah, absolutely. So the window of tolerance is a concept that um, uh, we can all tolerate a certain uh, amount of stress in our life. Um, but as our stresses uh, grow, be that, um, you know, uh, restrictions, or, um, uh, sorry, I'm actually just trying to find a, a decent, decent example uh, so which I can share my screen. Um, uh, you, sorry, there's nothing I can really get up. Uh, but when, um, uh, you know, when um, uh, people experience trauma or people um, experience um, adverse life effects, this can really shrink their window of tolerance and their amount of to what they may be able to tolerate may be less or it may be more than what you're able to tolerate. Um, so letting people know that, um, uh, you know, you're there to support them, they're happy, to leave, happy for people to leave the event at any time. Um, and um, if, if you search window of tolerance, on Google, it comes up with a with a wide range of concepts and images which can um, assist with that. I'm sorry, I can't get it up at the moment. Um, but um, just letting everyone know that um, our, our our levels of tolerance, you know, are, are a little smaller this year just because of all that's going on in everyone's lives and trying to adjust to a, a, a new new normality. Um, uh, we we can we can only tolerate so much. Um, so when there's negative impacts, that window gets smaller and smaller. Okay, thank you. It's interesting. Um, and finally, unless anybody else has um, any last burning questions to ask, I'll just keep going. <laughs> um, can you tell us um, more about what your team's up to at the moment, given it's uh, Mental Health Week? What kinds of things are you doing out in the community? <laughs> what, what are we up to? Um, well, thank you, Liz. Um, Liz has provided a uh, window of tolerance graphic in the chat, so that's um, really handy. Uh, what our teams um, during Mental Health Week, look, our role is the prevention and promotion of um, wellbeing and mental health and reducing stigma, so we're providing a wide range of events um, to go along with that. Uh, tonight, for example, I'm providing, I'm hosting, I'm not hosting, I'm speaking, I'm organising and speaking an event for journalists on how to effectively and safely report on things around mental distress um, suicide, um, uh, you know, traumatic events, and also, you know, self-care for journalists in industry that is um, really quite turbulent at the moment. They're, they're working with fewer resources than ever before um, and expected to put output a lot more work than ever before as well with the 24-7 news cycle. Um, in addition to this, we're currently working very closely with supporting our bushfire-affected communities. Uh, we have workers in Adelaide Hills, Kangaroo Island, and Yorktown, and we're actually partnering um, different part of my team is actually partnering with the History Trust tonight to provide some workshops on Kangaroo Island around the uh, Stitch and Resist program, uh, which is really important and provides that social connection once again, because that's what we're hearing from a lot of these bushfire affected communities. It's, um, yeah, we know, you know, we've still got fences to build and, um, uh, you know, 
plants to replant and things like that. But what, what we're really missing is that that social connection because that, that's what keeps a lot of people going through sporting clubs, through community groups and through activities is, is what's really important. So we're providing as many opportunities as we can during Mental Health Week for people to participate. Yeah, great, thank you. And uh, we have a question from Lainey. Um, do you have any tips for encouraging an older demographic um, like that who often attend History Festival? Um, to participate in online events. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, it's 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 not easy learning new things, and even when you are quite, you know, savvy with technology like myself, things tend to go wrong sometimes. Um, but there are a wide range of resources um, that are uh, hosted by the History Trust in terms of incorporating technology into your event. Uh, is there actually, Karen? I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> We're, we have a couple, I think, up there, um, but we're, it's a good segue into what I was going to talk about next is next week's um, webinar session on Wednesday is about um, holding digital events. Um, so we'll cover that a little bit. Um, but I guess, yeah, if you, anybody has any kind of tips about what kinds of challenges people are facing, if you're already working with um, audiences online at the moment, um, we can put together some more resources. Absolutely. And the, and the best way people learn is, is, is be, you know, through being shown. Um, so if you can you know, assist um, a, a, an older person in how to set up a computer or how to log on to a computer or how to join a Zoom call or zoom call when it comes through um, that's how people are really going to learn because people learn through practice and repetition and and being shown in a, in a supportive manner mm. and giving people instructions um, Liz has put together a bit of a help sheet for people um, that we've sent out in the past in the lead up to online events um, to guide people through testing their sound how to download zoom testing their microphone and all that kind of thing um, which we can share with people as well so we um, probably should have done that today. Probably, <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, next week we've got uh, our webinar on um, hosting a successful online event. So we'll be covering um, different types of talks. So lectures, interviews, conversations, whichever kind of talk you're interested in holding um, and also online exhibitions. Um, so, that, so Christina Peak from um, our sister festival, the Sala Festival, is um, going to be presenting along with our very own Britt Burton from the History Festival team. Um, the following week after that, um, we're still uh, just confirming details with our speaker, so we'll announce that one soon. Um, as I said, on Wednesday, the 4th of November, um, we are lucky enough to be joined by Jodie from Access to Arts. Um, and she'll be talking about creating accessible and inclusive events. Um, and for those of you who had booked in for last week's session, unfortunately, we had to postpone that one um, due to our presenter. She wasn't well um, and we're just still finalising a date. So we'll send that those details out when they're confirmed as well. I think um, that's about it for us today. Um, thank you so much again, Dan, for um, sharing your knowledge and um, experience with us on um, being, creating welcoming events and wellbeing. It's fantastic. Thank you. And uh, thanks to Liz as well, behind the scenes. Um, and thank you everyone who came along and who shared in the chat as well. It's great to see, see you all today. Um, so, uh, we hope to see you at our next events um, and stay tuned for more information about next year's History Festival. Okay. Thanks everyone. See you all.